In the book, uh, there's a new character. Have you heard about this new character? <laughs> I beat you to it, didn't I? You've never heard of this new character? Yeah. <coughs> You don't know what it is. Shall I give it? it, it, it I, I'll, spell, I'll spell three quarters of it. O T T. O T T. Yes! <laughs> you spell Otter? Yes. <laughs> All right, okay. I'll take that. So, do you want to hear about Otter? Now, this Otter, she's a lovely, but she's a lady. You know, she's a, a real English lady. She's got a row of pearls. And uh, when I tried to find a voice to her, I realized that. She reminded me of someone in a film that I saw many, many years ago. Um, it was called The Importance of Being Earnest, right? And it was a, about a young man who was, uh, he was brought up in a handbag. He lived in a handbag, or he was brought in a handbag. And this woman who played the part, she had this wonderful word, was oh, handbag. And I thought, oh, maybe that's... Maybe that's Otter's, Otter's voice, so let's have a go. I'll put my glasses on for this because all Otters wear glasses. <laughs> <laughs> then one day, which some said was the hottest yet, and others said it was the hottest ever, something long and slinky and furry and whiskery came out of what had once been a river but was now little better than a mud patch. Woo la! <laughs> said the silver and slinky thing, sitting up straight to the beech tree and looking around with beady eyes. What is a self-respecting otter to do when she can't have a bath? And, she added in a haughty voice, when she has nothing to eat? I, I, are you talking to me? asked Rabbit, who was bringing what was left of his washing to what was left of the stream. And who are you, long ears? I'm a rabbit, said Rabbit, startled and rather offended. And who are you? I'm asking the questions, Bunny Rabbit. Unless you are cleverer than I, which I don't suppose you are, looking as if you've just been dragged out of a conjurer's hat. Rabbit was so worried at being spoken to like this that he didn't know which way to look. When the slinky thing saw this, she grunted a few times which was as close as she would ever come to a chuckle. Well, Bunny, if you must know, my name is Lottie, but you haven't answered my questions. What were they again? I can't remember, <laughs> said Lottie. I'll go and ask Christopher Robin, said Rabbit, and he scuttled away a little faster than usual. Christopher Robin was looking at an atlas. I wonder why so many of the countries are pink, he said. I haven't time for all that now, said Rabbit. Well, if you were to visit them, the ground wouldn't be pink, would it? And if the world is round, why is the atlas flat? Oh dear, said Rabbit, beginning to panic because of so many questions in a single morning. Not knowing the answers, he changed the subject. Anyway, Christopher Robin, something has just come out of the river, and it wants a bath and something to eat. I think it's an otter. I've got a bath, said Christopher Robin cheerfully, and there's some potted meat in the larder. Do you think that would do? Perhaps you could come along and ask her yourself. By the time they got to the oozy bit that had once been a proper stream, quite a few of the animals had gathered around the otter who was twisting and turning in front of them like a ballerina in a musical box. My name is Lottie, she announced. See my fine fur coat, which is the color of silver when the sun shines upon it, and pewter when it's cloudy. And see, she added, my golden eyes and my long tail, which I call my rudder. It has been much admired for its length and flexibility. And beware, she concluded, my red tongue and my white teeth, which are sharp enough. I can promise you when they need to be. Then, just when the animals were becoming alarmed, she rolled over a few times and slithered off to hide in the bushes. Catch me if you can, she cried. I bet you can't, I bet you can't. <laughs> For a while, the animals tried their hardest not to find Lottie, which was difficult because her tail was sticking out a good six inches. <laughs> but then Tigger accidentally stepped on it and Lottie made a growling noise, so the game was up. Welcome to the forest, said Christopher Robin quickly before anything more disturbing could happen. I'm Christopher Robin and you're welcome to have a bath at my house if that's what you would like. 
Lottie reappeared from behind the bushes and bobbed her head gracefully. Thank you so much, Mr. Robin. I would not trouble you if I were not in great need. Then they all made their way back to Christopher Robin's house, where Christopher Robin ran a bath and helped Lottie to climb in it. Colder, Mr. Robin, she said. I like it nice and cold. It keeps me alert. She swam around for a while, tossing the sponge into the air and catching it and curling herself into a tight ball and spinning around with grunts of satisfaction and delight. But when Christopher Robin offered her potted meat, Lottie said, oh, no, no, eels and frogs are what otters eat. So that is what I shall expect for my supper. I don't think we have any eels or frogs, Lottie. Would sardines do? Mm, are they Portuguese? I, I expect, I expect some of them are. Are they in olive oil or tomato sauce? Gosh, said Christopher Robin, who was not used to being quizzed like this, not even at school, and he went to the larder and came back with a tin. It's, it's the best in the house, said Lottie. They serve both kinds and have pilchards in the servants' quarters. Christopher Robin wrapped Lottie in a yellow towel and carried her into the sitting room. He brought her sardines in olive oil on a blue dish, and she ate them hungrily, chewing up the crunchy bits and commenting, <coughs> Not bad. And now, she said, I shall play you a tune on my mouth organ. And she did it very prettily, so that the animals clapped and the bolder ones shouted, Bravo, Lottie. Thank you, said Lottie. I believe I shall stay. Thank <laughs> you.